Horticultural motifs were not the only coded references to sodomy and homoerotic pleasures in the burlesque, burlesque lexicon, both literary and artistic, of the Renaissance. A more ubiquitous metaphor, and we saw this played already, was the bird, slang in the Renaissance and throughout the ages for the penis, and more specifically in the 16th century, either for that particular part of the anatomy or for the rear end of an accessible boy. The political theorist and playwright Niccolo Machiavelli in an epistolary novella employed the bird metaphor to describe the sodomitic appetites of one Giuliano Brancacci, who, believing that every bird was in waiting, went in search of quarry. Enticing a little bird into an alley, quote, he kissed it repeatedly, straightened two feathers of its tail, and put the bird in the basket behind him, unquote. The protagonist of this account is a supposedly literary invention who just happens to have the same name as the real Giuliano Brancacci, who's mentioned in letters written to Machiavelli by his friend Francesco Vettori. Machiavelli makes it clear that anyone from a long list of names could be substituted for his fictional bird-loving Brancacci, thereby confirming that bird hunting, or sodomy, was common practice in Renaissance Florence, a reality confirmed in contemporary written documents. I think the bird on this myolica plate is a metaphor for sodomy, an alternative to the carnal pleasures of female flesh offered by the woman who displays her breasts, a profane gesture of offering as we've already seen, already seen. She attempts to persuade the viewer, a prospective client, one whose natural inclinations might incline more to bird hunting, to sample her particular charms. Such would seem to be the essence of the inscription, Take it and don't regret it. The worst that can happen is you'll have to give it back. Try it, you'll like it. Sodomy is the subject of a parodic, obscene Renaissance dialogue, La Cazzeria, or Book of the Prick, whose speakers discourse earnestly and at length on its manifold pleasures and superior virtues. Appropriating and parodying an elevated literary mode, the Platonic dialogue, to explore a lewd and obscene subject, La Cazzeria partakes of the spirit of the paradoxical encomium of Bernie's apotheosis of his urinal. Its ancient models lie not in Plato's symposium, but in Lucian's satiric dialogues, whose interlocutors, far from discoursing on noble philosophical ideas, get drunk, tell lewd stories, and misbehave. The very title of this Renaissance dialogue its coarse language, the lengthy and open exploration of sodomy and homoeroticism, the apparent lack of irony with which that subject is addressed, which is in itself an ironic inversion, and the anthropomorphizing of the male sexual organ all call to mind this extraordinary myolica plate decorated with the profile head of a man made up entirely of phalluses. And this is in the exhibition. I'm sure you're all gonna rush up there the second I'm done and go look at it. In a quintessential burlesque parody, a stock motif from the Maiolica painter's repertoire, the idealized head, we saw many of those in Dora's lecture, is here utterly transformed. The banderole, which typically bears an inscription explicating the painted subject or identifying him in some way, here expresses, with the same mock erudition and lack of irony as the protagonist of the dialogue La Cazzeria, this eroticized Archimboldo's wonderment Quote, everybody looks at me as though I am a dickhead. <laughs> that is what it says. <laughs> I had so much fun working in this exhibition. <laughs> and the next one, what could compare to this? I have to go back to saints and altarpieces. It's so boring. <laughs> We can only guess at the circumstances that led to the production of this plate. But it's not difficult to imagine its amusing presence at the racy and raucous gatherings of humanist secretaries, poets, and painters, the learned, inventive, witty fellows who formed the many academies, sodalities, and more informal supper clubs that sprang up in Rome and elsewhere in the Renaissance. It was presumably for such a close sodality, or one belonging to it, a sodality whose members shared a taste for learned eroticism, that this kind of learned but erotic object, or a drawing such as this by Francesco Salviati, would have been produced. 
that homoerotic attachments were both celebrated in verse and practiced by various members of many such fraternities, one such being the Humanist Academy of Pomponio Leto, the famous Academia Romana, was widely known. Machiavelli was told about one young poet in Rome who was always to be found in the protective company of four putane, or prostitutes, his correspondent explaining that that was because he worries that because he has a certain reputation for being a poet and that the Roman Academy wants to induct him, that he doesn't want to run any risk of being molested, unquote. Perhaps Salviati's drawing shows a young poet being initiated into the Roman Academy. <laughs> Whatever the case, such an image, like this composition, also by Salviati, just let your eyes wander across this. I'm not going to explain anything. <laughs> Would have been a source of titillating amusement to all the Bernese, Aretinos, and Molzas, as well as to Giulio Romano, Marc Antonio Raimondi, Parmigianino, and their fellows. And if all these images strike you as not only prurient and lewd, but also clever and amusing, you fully appreciated the Renaissance sensibility that joined the comic to the erotic, the ironic, and the burlesque. As Cardinal Bibiena, you all remember his niece and his bathroom and his racy theatrical production, as Cardinal Bibiena announces in Castiglione's great Renaissance dialogue, the courtier, the humorous is the things that move us to laughter. Thank you.